how much GFO does a reef tank need? Well, the answer to this question is a little bit loaded because it implies that you need GFO, aka granular ferric oxide, for a reef tank to be successful, which isn't true. GFO can be a great tool for reef keeping, but not everyone needs to use it. So when would you need to use GFO? First, let's look at what GFO is actually used for. GFO is a chemical media that is fantastic at removing excess phosphates from the water. So if your aquarium happens to have high phosphates, GFO can be a good solution for reducing them to a safe range. Symptoms of high phosphates in a reef tank can be excess algae growth, browned out or dull looking corals, and even stunted coral growth in the case of hard corals like Acropora. The only way to know for certain though, is by testing your aquarium water with a phosphate test kit Hannah checker or through an ICP test. So let's assume you've tested and lo and behold, your phosphates are above the recommended range of 0.04 to 0.06 ppm. Now you know your phosphates are higher than you'd like them to be and you're going to take action to reduce them in the form of GFO or granular ferric oxide since it's safe, affordable, and easy to use. Now we can ask the big question, how much GFO does my reef tank need? And I say my reef tank very purposefully because it's gonna be different for everyone. How much GFO you will need will depend on a few factors. The volume of your aquarium, the type of GFO you're using, and how much your phosphates need to be reduced by. Quick disclaimer, it is really important not to reduce your phosphates too quickly. A huge swing in phosphates can be really hard on corals, so a gradual reduction over time is always best, and why you should always follow the directions for the exact type of GFO that you have. Generally speaking, there are two types of GFO, standard and high capacity. The main difference being that high capacity GFO removes twice as much phosphate, meaning you can use half as much as standard GFO and get the same result. It's most frequently used on very large aquarium systems with a lot of water volume so that you can use less of it at a time, which requires less space or a smaller media reactor. For most reefers out there, standard GFO works very well. With standard GFO, one tablespoon will safely treat four gallons of water. So if you have a 100 gallon aquarium, you'll start off using 25 tablespoons of GFO. Once you've given it a rinse and added to your filtration, either in a media bag or in a small media reactor, you'll wanna continue testing your phosphates daily to see how far your phosphates come down in the first week. When using GFO for the first time, the initial batch of media can exhaust quickly because of the elevated phosphate levels in your tank. By testing for phosphates daily, you can see if they stop falling and start climbing again, which means it's time to swap out the GFO for a fresh batch. After that first batch is swapped out, the following batches of GFO will last much longer, typically in that four to eight week range. If you find that one tablespoon of GFO per four gallons of water isn't able to keep up and your phosphates aren't getting down to that range of 0.04 to 0.06, you can start using it at a higher ratio of up to two tablespoons of GFO per four gallons of water. But it's still best to increase that amount slowly. So I'd recommend trying 1.5 tablespoons first and stop as soon as you find that sweet spot for your aquarium's phosphates. Now here's the kicker. You don't have to use GFO to reduce your phosphates. In fact, there are many ways to manage the nutrients in your reef tank. So if swapping media doesn't sound like your cup of tea, maybe you'll prefer an all natural solution like macroalgae in a refugium, which you can learn all about in this video right here.